we are recording. Perfect. <gasps> no pressure, Lee. <laughs> Any mistakes will be saved for posterity at this point. And there's um, going to be plenty. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, the agenda for tonight um, is uh, that Lee is going to uh, very briefly cover kind of what Chrome Flex is uh, and why it can be useful. Uh, we're then going to look at the installation process for Chrome OS Flex. Uh, and we can have some discussion and answer some questions during that process. Uh, and then finally, we'll have a session at the end, just exploring Flex once it's up and running, to explore its capabilities, its limitations, um, and then answer any further questions you have at that stage before finishing up for the evening. Did you say uh, that you're going to share the recording afterwards? Yes, we'll share the recording afterwards, yes. Um, okay. Initially via the forum. OK, so without further ado, I'll hand over to Lee, uh, who, as you heard earlier, is the proud owner of a PC repair shop, uh, from which <laughs> I believe he's presenting this evening, hence the various computer paraphernalia in the background. No, this is my front room. It's your front room, <laughs> really? OK. <No. laughs> um, right. As well as the kind of uh, write articles for PC Pro uh, and bid tech questions. So we're really lucky to have Lee with us tonight. Um, take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you. You may not say that by the end of this, but we'll we'll, we'll get onto that later. Um, so anyway, thank you very much for turning out on a on a Thursday evening to uh, to come and listen to me waffle on. It really is uh, very nice to see uh, uh, some new faces. Um, so Chrome OS Flex, I've been playing with this for a, a few weeks now, and um, I was really intrigued by. Um, uh, the, the, what it is really and, and 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 why it's suddenly out at this point in time uh, now some of you have mentioned the cloud ready stuff some of you've mentioned linux and obviously doing what i do day to day uh, i see all sorts of frankly steaming wrecks of computers that you know uh, have, have long been sort of past their useful windows date because as windows uh updates as as we know and it progresses it just seems to get a bit a bit slower um i many years ago i wrote that windows uh, 10 was a bit like elvis presley and when it launched because i felt they put quite a lot of development to the launch of windows 10 microsoft it was like a elvis presley in a leather jacket sort of thrusting its hips and it was quite lithe and now it's updated it's now very much into the vegas jumpsuit era of uh the elvis presley man and it's not quite as slim and lithe as it used to be and it really as most of you know because you we sound like we all have similar experiences uh, making low powered hardware it makes uh, it really sweat and uh, that's why um actually i just happen to have these here um, I, I spend most of my days uh, changing hard drives for uh, ssds and, and various things you know i'm absolutely besieged by this mainly due to um the lethargy of windows so chrome OS X flex is a really interesting sort of proposition um and i've been trying it on all sorts of uh really old hardware so if you <laughs> I, now normally i'd refocus this so you just have to blur your brains for a little bit but as you see over that shoulder i'm gonna get this wrong all night uh that's a 2013 mac uh that's really blurred you can't see and that's running chrome os flex above it wrong side again um that's a hp laptop which is running a sixth gen intel so not relic uh and behind me i'll just dip down here ah, there you go that's a, a lenovo uh running a um second gen intel i3 um which is about as low as you really want to go on a windows 10 system these days now critically what all they've all got in common is come the end of windows 10 they're from a microsoft perspective they're all going in the bin so it's it's nice to see something else out there that could potentially take over and i know we have linux uh, but in my business i deal only with home users it's a bit like restart you know you mainly see consumers and having done this for a long time 18 years now linux has never quite got to the point where i can hand it over to someone uh, with not a lot of technical knowledge and think yeah you'll probably be okay because they probably won't and i know um linux is a very very good piece of software but the moment you ask a 
an average user on the high street to open a command prompt and type this in that you've you've lost them that they've gone so chrome OS flex is is a, a nice way of getting into the google ecosystem um and uh i i think it's got a lot of potential it's not there yet as we'll we'll, we'll get to in a minute but um uh i'll i better i better show you some show you some stuff is any has anyone got any questions at this point good that's <laughs> that's what we like okay now here, here we go brace yourselves because i'm about to do something exciting here uh i've no idea what it was here we go excellent now as you can see, I'm about to bring up the, the, the Google Chrome screen. And, um, and as you can see, I've got an absolute blank screen. What this actually means in real life is uh, for this project, I bought the Elgato Camlink. And it is, without doubt, the worst piece of software I've ever seen in my entire life. And I've been wrestling with this since four o'clock this afternoon. So if you, uh, what there's going to be a lot of tonight is you talk, talking amongst yourselves for a little while, uh, while I just restart various capturing pieces of software. So uh, I, I hope uh, you, know, you all know a few songs or perhaps a few jokes, and uh, and we'll we'll do, we'll do what we can and uh, and see if we can get this all worked out. Um, and this is why also uh, James is recording this because we will need to actually stitch this back together later to make it look like it was some sort of plausible piece of uh, live stream. Um, bear with me a second. I am extremely sorry about this. There is going to be quite a bit of this going on. Right. Okay. Looks like I've got something going on. And flip that into it. I normally, I, for 18 years, I have um, fixed computers in the privacy of my own little shop uh, without an audience. So this is, uh, this, this is quite a, a, a different thing for me. So, uh, Right, let me uh, do that and do that and do that. Right, okay. Can you all see that? Yep, that looks great. Yeah. Yes, they chorused. Wonderful. So uh, this is a desktop for a Hewlett Packard uh, sixth gen i7. So it's a old machine which I use day in day out uh, for doing various things. So again, it's a typical sort of machine which is going to be in a few years time with its neck on the block from a microsoft perspective so it's the sort of thing that uh, i i guess is really what chrome is about um let me just cover one other thing just before we get into the nitty-gritty uh and i will zoom in in a minute using the uh the, the magic of technology uh as uh, as James uh, mentioned, I also write for a website called the Big Tech Question, and this weekend we published uh, a couple of stories on how to install uh, Chrome OS Flex on a PC and how to install it on a Mac. Um, and these are step-by-step uh, -step guides of how to basically what we're going to cover tonight and and how to do it so don't worry so much about making notes for tonight because it's it's going to be it, you have access to this if uh, if you need it as well so it's uh um it's 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 quite a lot it's quite a long process but most of you i don't think it'll be anything that you haven't really sort of you haven't really covered before um right shall we begin ladies and gentlemen um to do this, you're going to need uh, Google Chrome because it's a Chrome system. And uh, to get the USB created, we need the Chrome. Um, we need the Chrome software, the Chrome browser. Um, to get to where we need to go, we basically have a look at the Chrome Store. I'm just going to flick the mouse. There we go, and we go to the Chrome Web Store, which uh, you, if you go to uh, chrome.google.com um you can um and go to uh, slash web store you can get to that quite easily so this is the inbuilt little um app store if you like for the chrome browser so most of you will know it and love it and uh, have been there plenty of times before so um very simply uh we type uh on the right keyboard <clears throat> So we want the Chromebook recovery utility, which is there. I will see if I can just stretch that out using absolutely the correct mouse. It's, I honestly, I wish you could see this from this side. It's absolute chaos. Right. 
if any of you have used a Chromebook before, you'll have uh, you'll be very familiar with this. This is their sort of standard tool. But if you're new to this and trying to experiment, um, this is what you'll need to do. So basically, you just add this to the Chrome browser. Now I'll have a think about life. Now, this is the bit, uh, one of the bits that normally tricks people out. Chromebook utility added to Chrome, no problems at all there. And you can see the little Chromebook icon up there. And when you click that, it disappears. So you spend the next sort of 10 minutes trying to work out where it is. And if you're not too experienced with Chrome, um, this can be <laughs> really annoying. Uh, just click on the little jigsaw icon piece there. And voila, there it is. And then you can pin that to your taskbar and give it a click. And here we go. Everyone with me so far? Is everyone so still far so good. Yeah, cool, no right, okay. Sorry, did you say there was a question, James? No, no questions, I think. No questions, that, that, that's, that's good. Okay, um, and again, anyone that's used to a, a bit of computers, this is going to be um, uh, quite straightforward. However, just a couple of things to watch out for trying to find this. Um, there's a few uh, do's and don'ts. So I'm just gonna shove in a USB stick into my computer. There we go. And I'm gonna click the right mouse. <laughs> Is there a minimum spec for the Chrome OS? There is not so much a minimum spec. Um, and that's a really good point. My apologies. I'm not on the right screen, so I can't see who said that. So, but thank you very much for your question. It's, uh, it's, it's the way seen. Google are, sorry, the, the, the way Google are uh, pushing it in the moment is it's very much a development product and they are saying, uh, for example, that they are listing compatible machines. So mainly that's machines uh, from the big box shifters. So your Dells and your Lenovo. So if you've got a Dell Inspiron 1350 or something, they may have tested this on that and say, yeah, that is compatible. If you're the sort of person that builds their own desktop or, you know, you're, you're a part of a restart gang and you've basically m nailed something together for a customer, you sort of, take your life in your hands and see what happens. But I have um, one of the articles I wrote for PC Pro um, about a, oh, uh, about a year ago, uh, we had a 250 pound challenge where it was literally uh, chips from a reasonably priced skip. It was how it was, how it's based. So I went out, out the back here and found uh, various bits of computers that have a retail value of about 250 quid. And the idea was I had to build something that would outperform um, it was things like the Raspberry Pi, um, the, the slightly bigger one with the keyboard that I've forgotten its name off the top of my head, and a few other things that the rest of the team had come up for 250 quid. Um, and when I started with Chrome OS Flex, and so just to go back, sorry, and that machine is built from it, it's, it's so much mishmash junk, you, you wouldn't believe it. I, I, we dare even put a name in it. Um, and Chrome runs perfectly fine, fine on that, no problem at all. And I've got a couple of bits and bobs which I shall plug in later and show you it's, though it's a dev product, it, it really is quite good. So yeah, don't worry so much about um, what it is, uh, what it will run on, because it, it, it's, it's really quite uh, really quite a versatile little thing. Now, uh, here we go. Let me grab a mouse, and apologies for bonking the mic there. So, um, and this is where, um, uh, you, you may come a cropper to start with. So it says, type in your name, your Chromebook, and under normal circumstances, if you're trying to refresh your Chromebook, you would type in your whatever you've got there. What we need to do is go to select model from a list. And as you can see, when we click on this, we have all sorts of manufacturers. And very nicely hidden amongst it is Chrome OS Flex. And then you click that, and you only have one option. And it tells you quite, quite up front that this is an unstable version. So, you know, warning, here be dragons and, and things like that. And then you click continue and then you choose your USB drive. Again, this is all pretty, uh, uh, pretty uh, routine stuff. Then you click continue and then off we go. Now, I'm not going to do this stage at this point because this stage takes about 40 minutes it's an unbelievably long process it's far longer to do this bit than it is to actually install the software so i'm going to hold it here but you, i guess you can guess what's about to happen it'll create the software it'll uh, um it'll put it on the usb stick just as it just say there in the uh, in the bump it is going to wipe everything on that drive so please don't uh, use photos of precious uh, a, a, an SSD drive with uh, precious photos or anything like that. Um, 
and off it goes. So that's the install process, uh, for, sorry, the creation process. Um, I think the next thing we need to do is we need to try and install it. So uh, again, I shall uh, bear with me a second. I shall uh, disappear over here and uh, and I shall shut all that down. Did that all did that all make sense so far? Yeah, seems straightforward enough. It is. It's really straightforward. You know, I, you know, you're all experienced tech guys. You know, I, yeah, I'm doing this as a bit of a sort of step by step sort of thing. You know, you all know what you're doing. Um, apart from trying to find it where it is in that list, th there's nothing here that's going to fool you at all. So I think it, Greg it has really... a question. Oh, is that right, Greg? Feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, do you have to sign up to a developer program before you can download it? Uh, originally at launch, you did. That's gone now. They don't care, <laughs> which is good. So anyone can do it. So I, I've done all that tonight without signing into anything. So I, I mentioned OS Flex in this month's uh, PC Pro. And um, I mentioned about having a, a Google business account. And that was how I got access to it. So wait, when it first launched, yes, it was behind uh, that restriction. At the moment, it, it's really not. So anyone can go in. I, uh, sorry, I should have explained that. Yeah, there was no sign in process there that this install of Windows 10 is a, a fresh vanilla install with a local account um, and nothing exciting going on. So no, you can do exactly what I've just done there uh, without having any of the uh, the business accounts. Greg, if you we'll do a web, if you're starting with a mic, we'll feel free to type your question. Big tech. Sorry, Rasim. Sorry. Sorry, Rasim, go ahead. I was just going to say, was the website called the Big Tech Question? Okay. Ah, yes. And, yeah. 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 Big, big. If you got a totally off brand computer, um, you, you, you just select Google Chrome OS Flex as manufacturer. Yep. Absolutely. That, that is the, uh, yeah, it doesn't, but it, at, at that point, it doesn't care what you've got. Um, you, um, yeah, it, it, it's one build fits all. And the compatibility of what you've got in your hardware, it will work out when it starts the install. So the, there's no granulation at this point. It is that that's what you get. Interestingly, uh, just to go back to Wasm, yes, it's bigtechquestion.com. And to do the two stories on here that I did, the one did the, uh, the Chrome one and did the uh, sorry, did the Mac one and did the PC one. I actually interchanged the installers just just for my own curiosity, just on the, on the on the point that you've mentioned. So yes, I built the installer on the Mac and then installed it on the PC, and it doesn't care. It's the, it's the same thing. It builds uh, the same USB drive. Is and does that answer your question, Wasim? It, it's big tech big tech question okay, I got it. Cool, good stuff. Right. Drum roll. Here we go. So what I'm going to do now is uh, restart the system, and then it's going to boot beautifully into the BIOS screen where I, I will start the procedure. If any of you have a religious persuasion, please, please help me out at this point. <laughs> It's all very tense. Hey Lee, can this only install from USB or can it can install from network PXE? Uh, at the moment, it is USB only. Um, I have no doubt they will change something later down the line, but at the moment, no. Okay. And as you can see, this works brilliantly well. Is this what they meant by uh, unstable? This, yeah, this is the. Uh, uh, I thought w when I did the demo with you uh, a couple of weeks ago, James. I thought, oh, this is brilliant! I can show you the boot screen. I can do the whole thing. And of course, for these two articles I've written, I've done all the screen captures with that, and it worked beautifully last night. And today, it's just behaving like a pig. So uh, you'll have to uh, bear with me a second while I uh, uh, while I sort a couple of things out. But uh, uh, just talk amongst yourselves, if you will. Hey, I'll. Uh... We have a question from Greg uh, Lee. Um, Greg, fire away. Greg asks, uh, can can he put this image on a USB hard drive? Uh, 
I guess so, as long as it's, uh, you will lose everything that's on it. Um, it is a, um, it does wipe anything. I haven't tried it on a, um, sorry, I just realized my mic's over here. Uh, I haven't tried it on a uh, USB hard drive, um, but I don't see any reason why it, it, it wouldn't work. It will it will repartition it, reformat and give it a boot sector. So yeah, theoretically it, it, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a problem, but say it will nuke everything. A, a USB is probably an easier thing. Right. You see, that's never a good sound. Yeah. I'm curious, has anyone in the room had much experience with Chromebooks in general or Chrome OS in general? Not talking about Flex, but just um, your kind of vanilla Chromebook. No, <laughs> fair enough. Nobody. <laughs> that should be interesting for all of us then. And I think this is one of the great things about, about Flex. Um, Particularly when I when I see uh, Chromebooks in my shop, um, they're normally the really sort of low powered, um, yeah, sort of netbook sort of uh, sort of substitutes, um, and it's um, with with this, of course, you've got a real opportunity to sort of put it on something that's you know sort of half decent um which is which is an, an, a nice a nice thing um right okay bear with me and and it, you know it really does fly um as i'm hoping i'll be able to show you at some point hey good grief tastes like pulling teeth right okay sorry about that uh folks we might have to do that again but uh we we are we are on so um this is the initial launch for chrome OS flex i'm afraid i've had to miss out the uh uh pressing f9 to boot but i guess with the uh the audience we've got tonight that's not too much of an issue so this is um uh the chrome screen let me see if i can uh let me just see if i can zoom in a little bit on this for you and just uh just give you a slightly better picture of what's going on there we go so it's a really nice process actually um it also does uh first thing it does out the box so i've not done anything at this point i've just launched it it, it wants to use chrome vox which is the built-in screen reader um which um i won't do because i can't pipe the audio into uh, where we are at the moment without um probably all my hair falling out i would i would have said after today uh, but uh you know it's it's nice to see it, what i get is it, it's really not a cut down sort of thing with one exception which we'll get to in a minute so welcome to chrome os flex nice animation at this point ignore language ignore um ignore the other options uh you have got accessibility options here as well um you know you can uh, change uh certain aspects uh and we'll click get started so a couple of options here um and one if you're um if if you're uh, not willing to sacrifice a bit of hardware you can uh, actually install it on a uh basically run it off the usb there is questions about compatibility uh of that and it, it doesn't detect hardware as well so uh, by all means give it a whirl but um it is slightly better on a, a bit of old hardware and by the sounds of it most of you have something something aged kicking about that uh, that should do the job uh i will uh, click on that one and uh there's a few warnings and uh and and the usual stuff nothing exciting at this point what they do point out uh about <laughs> use the wrong mouse again uh at g.co dash flash dash install guide dash slash um 
there is a step-by-step -step guide of, of how to install frankly it's nowhere near as good as the one i wrote but you know that you know what can, what can you do um so chrome is going to erase the hard drive um which is obvious so i i suspect possibly at some point there there will be a way to very nicely dual boot this perhaps if you wanted to with another system at the moment uh, i i certainly haven't worked that out but uh, because it's not a fully finished product yet um, this thing it updates quite rapidly, which is interesting. Um, so probably best to leave it as a as a single operating system on a single machine. Um, so we can just uh, chew the fat for a, for a few moments. Now it says it will take twenty minutes, but uh, there's, an, there's an SSD in this machine. I've I've tried to speed up the process as best as I can, um, but it it really is it really is quite perky um, for the installation. Um, at the moment, I'm only connected in via an Ethernet cable. Uh, I will cover connectivity in a second. What it's doing during this stage, it's basically dumping the contents of the USB onto the hard drive. And then at the end of this process, it will shut the machine down um, and it will power it off. And this is the bit that, uh, or one of the things that, that catches you out, because when Windows restarts, um during the installation process it restarts uh chrome doesn't it turns off so you can be sat there for some considerable time waiting for something to happen and nothing's going to happen um but you can also at that point pull the usb stick and uh and and just let it uh, get on with life so we'll just have a um a few moments reflection as we watch this hypnotic sign go round for for a little while has anyone got any uh questions at this point Oh, tough. You missed your chance. That's it. <laughs> Got to be quick around here. OK, here we go. So. It will shut down in 49 seconds. There's not a handy little shut down now button, so I presume it might be doing something in the background uh, uh, here, but uh, we'll just have to, uh, have to play it by ear. There we go. Oh, good. I can see you all again now. Now I've moved my, I've moved my screen. If anyone's wondering, I'm wrestling with OBS uh, tonight. As I said to James a few weeks ago, I've done three YouTube tutorials, so I, I am now classified as an expert. Um, so doing all this live and with all this is is a bit, uh, as you can tell, a, li a little rough. But um, hopefully it will give you a, a, an idea about uh, uh, what this thing can do in in real time. Here we go. So and so the machine has gone and the light has gone off back to no signal so i have pulled the usb so nothing up the sleeve one usb stick touch that and we will turn the machine on and pray to the elgato gods that it will pick up the signal and give me a picture back I have to say, the Elgato captured hardware is actually really quite good. Oh, now my camera's gone as well. Oh, it's all gone wrong. <laughs> Can anyone still hear me? Oh, there we go. We're back. The audio is fine. So uh, the audio is fine. Just no, so at least it. at least something is ready. I can resort to semaphore. I can describe the rest of the process to you. <laughs> yeah. Bear with me a second. The, the Elgato app has crashed again. Um, and it, it, it is, um, I mean, uh, many of you probably work with Elgato stuff. You know, it, it's 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 good stuff, but the, the software is absolute trash. Um, <laughs> and they're not paying me to say that. Right. OK, I have it back. I just have to now choose 38 different capture devices and voila right okay i will zoom in a little now can everyone see that okay yeah that looks great perfect good stuff now it may look a little familiar basically because we've put the software from the usb onto the drive we're now repeating essentially the steps we've just done so yeah there, there is a bit of deja vu here so uh, I'm going to, uh, for reasons that I mentioned, um, now at this point, you do want to choose your keyboard and language. So you can go to, uh, I'm, j just for the hell of it, I'm going to use English United Kingdom. Um, 
I, I do like the option for Oxford English Dictionary version, which I've, I've no idea what the difference between those is. Um, but uh, I'm just going to choose those. So again, pretty standard fare. But as you can see, there's, you know, there's a, a fair swathe of, of keyboard um, versions in there. You know, it's not a, um, you know, it, it's not a, a restricted sort of product. I'm sure there's not everything in there, but I'm sure there's something for most people to get the, to get them going at uh, at the beginning. Uh, so off we go, get started. Now, connect to a network. Um, let me uh, let me just bring up a. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. There we go. Right. Uh, so, as I said, we're connected by Ethernet. What I have here, my sticky little mitts, is a USB wireless adapter. Da, 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 da. There you go. This is what I quite like about Chrome um, is it's it's really quite good at picking up hardware. Um, so if I shove that in there like that, you'll see above the top of the screen, little line turns up. And there we go. We have wirelessness. And it, it, it really is quite straightforward. Now, it is a little picky about what it likes and what it doesn't like in wirelessness. Um, that's a TP-Link T2UH, everyone's favorite wireless adapter, obviously. Um, so a, a pretty common piece of kit, not, not particularly new. So the sort of thing that you would probably find at a, hanging out the back of a, a restarter's uh, computer or someone that's come into a, a, a cafe. This is a, you can't see that because of terrible focus. That's a TP-Link something from a similar range. Interestingly, Chrome doesn't like that at all. Um, so it, it, it's not universal on hardware, but it, it is pretty, uh, it is pretty damn fine. Uh, for Just for the sake of it, I am going to pull that out and we'll just carry on this experiment on on, uh, on Ethernet. So if you've got if you've got devices in your in your system, there's a good chance that uh, that Chrome will be able to sort it out, right? Uh, uh, so this is the uh, Google Terms of Service. Does any, anyone want to read this out for us? There's about sixty pages. Any, any no, okay. So um, Chrome account set up uh, for ourselves or children. Uh, one thing that I I love about uh, chromium if you want to call it that uh, my i've got two kids um who are seven and nine and at the start of lockdown we um got them a couple of chromebooks for homeschooling and stuff like that just two little zeus things um nothing exciting nothing powerful and being able to set them up under child profiles is is a really nice thing to do and this is a good use for chrome flex um if you have got a young one or you know children or grandchildren or, or, or people like that it's a nice little way of uh, of, of giving them a, a cheap usable machine um that you can um put certain parental restrictions on which is built into the operating system so um again just another use uh, for this software uh so i'm going to set this up for me because obviously that's who i am and uh i'm just going to There we go. This is my wondrous test account for the googly things. Right, talk amongst yourselves, this might take a while. Interesting point from uh, Neil in the chat. Not sure whether there's a, a Linux equivalent child-friendly um, distro. That's an interesting point. My, my knowledge of Linux isn't broad enough to know, but um, yeah, if anyone knows one. Yeah, I think that I didn't. I wasn't aware of that installation option with Chrome Flex, but I think that's a really good um, selling point of it to have that. Just you know, just a checkbox almost at the beginning. Is this is a child going to be using this? And then it's got appropriate restrictions on there. It, absolutely i've not delved into it too much um for what i've done but um I, this is my my mobile phone and like like many of us that um might have the uh like the google i'm showing this you can't see it at all i'm so sorry the google family link so um my daughter's devices appear in here and this I would imagine would be the same it will appear in this list i can associate it with my family group and and i can do certain things and it's 
it's a it's a, again it's a it's a nice little thing uh right uh i need to generate a two fa code this i mean this must be absolutely thrilling on a thursday night for you guys i mean you could be watching taskmaster or something like that instead of watching me do two fa i'm using authy if there's any anything there there's a go right and we're away Again, you've got uh, all your sync items as you would uh, as you would accept uh, accept expect, um, and you can choose uh, what you want to do and uh, and how you want to uh, uh, and how you want to do that. Have I lost my mouse again? Oh, you're having a giraffe. No, oh, hang on, we're on, we're on. So yeah, you can uh, choose what you want to think. So we're talking bookmarks, wallpapers, history, apps, all the usual stuff to do with uh, with Google Chrome, or you can choose to sync them afterwards. Again, there's there's nothing exciting going on here. Now, uh, this is a key one. Um, Chrome is obviously <laughs> harvesting information. No surprise, it's Google. Uh, but they are particularly uh, wanting, because of the nature of this product, they're wanting to know what it's running on. Uh, so personally, I don't have a problem with ticking the box in, yes, you can have my hardware information, because frankly, you're having everything else. You might as well complete the picture. Um, and there is information on their website about exactly what they're collecting and and what they're doing with it. But I, I see this as a, you know, you're giving me something for free. I know I'm probably a product in this somewhere, but... Uh, but there we go. Right. Um, Google Assistant, you can do. Um, I would demo this for you. I've just realized there's not a microphone on this machine, but you can do the Hey Google stuff. And that all works very nicely on the browser. You can train this at this point, but you can set this up later down the line. I will click that. And again, um, that's all the uh, Hey Google, which uh, annoys you. And you know what? That's it. We're done. It's that quick. Look, it, it even did the wallpaper. Look at that, branding. Uh, bear with me a second. I'm on the wrong mouse again. There you go. And there it is. It is the full uh, the full WAC Chrome operating system with uh, you know all your toolbars. Let me let me take my ugly mug out of the way. Um, that'll help. There we go. Um, and you've got uh, access to to various things now i installed uh something on here earlier called cog uh which is a little uh, utility for showing system specifications so you can see um what sort of machine this is it's uh, intel i7 um so nothing uh, nothing flash or fancy but you see it's it's got bags and bags of resources here you know which i guess is the isn't this the ethos, ethos of restart? You know, it's the fact that, you know, in no way, shape or form, is this machine ready for the bin? Now, obviously, Microsoft's not quite saying that at this time, uh, but, you know, it'll be a few years uh, down the line when Windows 10 is uh, duff. This machine will be good for something, providing something inside doesn't go bang. But uh... now, I keep, I did mention a couple of times there was a bit of a gotcha. Um, let me just bring that down and I will try and uh, I will try and show you what that gotcha is. Bear with me. Uh, hold on. So this is the uh, this is the start menu for Chrome. Um, which if any of you use, use Chromebooks, hey, oh, that worked really well. Uh, so you can see all, all your apps and utilities. So you've got straight access straight into the Google infrastructure. So if we open something like uh, Google Docs, there we go. I will just click on there, get rid of that. This is all the, the stuff which is in everyday Google, um, uh, Google Docs on a full, on what you call a full pack Chromebook that you buy from a shop. It, tags into the Google Drive. That's how the restart wallpaper appears because I've got it logged into Google Drive. So from this aspect, you've got everything that you would have in a commercial Chromebook. The bit that's missing um, at the moment, I will, uh, is the Google Play Store, 
uh, which is basically what gives Google its its apps. So you've got things like, um, if we click the right damn mouse, uh, you've got things like uh, the Play Store for books and videos and stuff like that, but apps are not here. Now, I'm led to believe um, it's it's all coming. Um, sorry, I'm showing you completely the wrong thing. There we go. There we go. Uh, so you've got a Google Play Store for that. Um, what else have we got? And there's the Play Bookstore. No books in my library. Yeah. Knows too much about me already. And again, this will tag into whatever you've got in your Google library and you can watch your media, which again is great for kids and, and things like that. The the downside with the Google Play Store being missing is uh the millions and millions of apps which are available for Flex are just not there yet. So if you want to play Among Us or you want to uh, download uh, extra software um, it, it, that ability is not there I for the digging I've done because this is a developmental product Microsoft Microsoft listen to me Google are being really just cautious about hardware because running their own software on a piece of kit is okay when you start bringing apps in that stresses the hardware in different ways so I I presume um that once they're cool with this uh they bring that on board and the moment they bring that on board we've got a genuine proposition here as an alternative operating system um in a way that i don't i've never seen in 18 years uh, we were talking about the just a second ago about the child friendliness of, of linux i i love linux i've run linux plenty of times but it's always ended up coming off my system um because I, I always describe it a bit like a like a classic car. You know, you've got to spend a lot of time with the bonnet up. And this is a, a, a slightly different thing for people that just want a machine that works and particularly something on low powered hardware. Um, I, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff here. Um, there's not too much more um, to show you. I've got a couple of things. I'm just going to squiggle my what's it over here. Uh, in the meantime, we have a, a question from Chris. Who oh, asked, Chris, far away. Uh, do we know when it's likely to be out of development and in production? Uh, and also how are upgrades handled? Upgrades ha happen on the fly. So when it boots up every so often, you'll get the message in the same way that you get it on Chromebooks at the moment, which is basically you get a, uh, there's a little pop-up option sort of up the top here, like a little toaster saying, hey, there's an upgrade. And it just does it and then restarts. You, I guess if you go digging on the Chrome website, you can find out what that upgrade is. Uh, but they are they are actively doing it. Um, I've noticed since I've been playing with this. I mean, I I, um, I I got involved with the the restart forum post quite early on, and it's changed a lot since then. Um, so it's yeah, just 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 keep an eye on it. When it will come out of development, I I don't know if it ever will. You know, Google are notorious for keeping things in development forever. So, you know, I, I think it will be one of those beta products, which uh, which just carries on um, just uh, uh, just whilst uh, I uh, I'll just flip back. We I did the uh, the little switcheroo with the uh, with the wireless uh, dongle uh, as well. Uh, the other thing uh, that you can do to it, of course, is uh, Bluetooth, um, which people say, you know, why are you why are you using Bluetooth these days? So if I plug that in like that it'll have a think about life and then voila it's just picked it up and that's just a standard five pound sorry about that that's my amazon echo kicking in um that's just a standard five pound bluetooth adapter which now enables me to uh connect uh my mobile phone uh so i can if i'm signing in to flex on the same account as my mobile phone's in i can do passwordless sign-ins it will detect the proximity of my phone so all that is live and active as well i can't demonstrate that because my phone's not on that account uh mm -hmm. but i advise you to, to to give that a whirl if you've got a if you've got a google um if you've got a google phone an android phone um do your flex install on the same account and uh, that's a really nice uh, a, a nice little feature the fact that you can uh, start to talk to it via a mobile um is there anything else you want to see? I don't. I don't think, like I say, because it's a 
a bog basic sort of uh, installation, um, you know, you've got access to obviously uh, YouTube and Chrome and uh, and uh, all the uh, all the say tons of Google. You've got access to um, we, we mentioned earlier the the Chrome store. So you can get uh, uh, you can get access for um, oops, bear with me a second. That's an old bookmark. Uh, so you can get access to the uh, uh, to the Chrome apps that we uh, that we mentioned. I'm going to type this on the correct keyboard. That will really help. Uh, while you're doing that as well, we've got a couple of questions from Wasim, uh, who asks: Is there cheap 64-bit hardware to test this product? And does Chrome Remote Desktop work? Chrome Remote Desktop does work, um, which is really nice. Um, it doesn't. I, ooh, now, now you're asking me. Uh, I'm six, cheap 64-bit. Yeah, um, I was going to try it on a Pi. I know Pi is not technically what you're talking, possibly not what you're talking about. But I've yet to find anything that this thing won't won't run on. Um, there are. Uh, there are obviously things that it, that it that it won't but yeah but basically throw i I've, I've put it on some low end stuff as well i mean i know i'm surrounded here by max and uh and i5s and i3s but i've done some celerons and some pentium golds and as i said that that 250 pound machine that i did for pc pro is an absolute crate uh de death trap probably uh so uh, and it worked it worked fine on that so you know don't, don't be yeah, you know, don't, don't don't be scared of trying it on something because chances are it, it'll work in some some form. And if you look on the Google website for the for Flex and they talk, uh, they list sort of what machines are compatible. It's not a yes, no, it's a not yet. So I've got confidence that that this is, a, um, you know, something for us for us all to keep an eye on, particularly in light of uh, Windows 365, which is Microsoft's cloud computing, which is now available for enterprise, but isn't available for for consumers. So um, we, we're at an interesting point with we're all your home users are all on Windows 10 and Windows 11. But Microsoft have launched this cloud version of Windows. So essentially you, you, you open a browser and there's your Windows desktop, which is a you can see is the natural end of of where home desktops are going. So I'm going to look at the camera instead of the screen. Um, and I think this is Chrome Flex plays a part in in this of trying to shift people away, perhaps from that Microsoft mindset that uh, that that someone mentioned earlier. Um, and it, it's it's nice to see a what I think potentially could be a really valid alternative. Uh, thanks, Lee. Um... Just one quick more, one quick point from Philip, who I believe is sharing his screen as well at the moment. Who is um, he? Saying he's let, 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 let me flick back. <laughs> he says he's installed <laughs> it under VMware uh, and it's not running particularly well. And he doesn't have any apps running along the bottom except a Google icon. So I'm not sure if you can recognize what's going on here. Yeah, that's cloud ready. That's not, that's not Flex. Oh, yeah, that's, okay. That's a, that's a different product. Uh, just to mention that, uh, because you said Cloud Ready was a, a nice little a nice little system, uh, and then yeah, I think Google bought them and then uh, I think quickly sold it or squealed it <laughs> away and, and or, or have improved it, developed it, and and this has come out. So yeah, th this um, I, I've I've used Cloud Ready when I've had to do remote support with people on Chromebooks and things like that because it was a nice way of doing the uh, the uh, remote control. It just worked very nicely. But Flex is a lot a um, lot nippier, a lot more responsive. It just feels like it's not a a bodge. Uh, it's an awful thing to say about Cloud Ready. Cloud Ready always seemed like a compromise, which it was a compromise. Chrome Flex doesn't. It, it feels like this is the the real deal. And they say once they can get this this uh, Play Store sorted out, then uh, it, you know, yeah, we're sucking diesel. We're on. Okay, I think I um, simply installed on the VMware some binary I'd downloaded some months before. So um, that's how the mistake occurred. Absolutely, I have tried in vain to get Flex onto a VM, 
and have failed miserably at, at every point. But that might be down to my VM software. Um, uh, it certainly doesn't work on VirtualBox. I spent a long time trying to get it to work on VirtualBox, but it works on VMware. It, yes. Uh, sorry, I meant uh, Flex. It it wouldn't uh, I, I, Flex. I can't. Oh, right. I can't get. I can't get it to work on VMs. But at, uh, a lot of googling shows, I'm not the only one that can't do it. But you know, um, I, I I wanted to see it on bare bones hardware because I, I feel sure. as um, you know as, as we go forward and and people are sort of wondering what to do uh, with their Windows 10 machines come in and play or even you know if if you roll forward only as far as January, you know, Win, Windows 8 uh, has got its neck on the block in January. So there's a there's a lot of uh, there's still a lot of Windows 8 machines out there in 8.1, and there's people going to be wondering what to do at that point. And um, I don't know how many of you have used Windows 11 at the moment, but it's uh, I, again, if we say that Chrome Flex is in development, you know, you could you could levy the same argument at Windows 11 at the moment, which seems to change every time you turn the damn thing on. So you know, um, you, using the public as guinea pigs does seem to be the uh, de rigueur in the uh, in the tech community at the moment. Wonderful, cool. Um, so it looks like we're at the end of the evening. Um, so <laughs> thanks so much, Lee. Um, on behalf of like everyone here, you survived and you did it, and you got us through, and it was really interesting and really useful. So thank you very much for um, all your work. I think Ugo wanted to say a quick word. Um, well, I just had a question that uh, maybe uh, you didn't see, James. That was. Um, I don't know if you can install things that are more like Linux apps on it. Not, not at the moment. Not until they get the the Play Store sorted, uh, and that's where your 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 third party apps, so your non Google stuff, comes in. So, for example, my kids uh, love to play uh, the game called Among Us, and you can't get any of that stuff until they unlock this Play Store. But um, there may be a way to sideload stuff eventually. Uh, so if there is something that doesn't appear in the Play Store that you might be able to sort of get it to run through um, non, uh, you know, non-authorized means, I'm sure that will become available at some point and someone will work that out. Unfortunately, I, that, that is slightly beyond my, uh, uh, my knowledge at this point. But if it's possible, so, so, someone will work it out. But with it being a dev product, there's just a... I think there's a wait and see element as to actually what it's going to go, but you can get access to the sort of, uh, you know, the, the terminal on the back end and, and have a look at things. But uh, And can uh, you install the Linux sub subsystem like you can under proper Chromebooks? Uh, not um, as far as I'm aware of, not at the moment. Uh, okay. However, that was the last time I had a look at that was about three months ago. Um, no, that's absolutely right. It'd be about about two two and a bit months ago, I think. Um, so by all means, give it a try. You, you, it may be the answer is yes yet. Google are never brilliant at sometimes of saying what they've done and what they haven't done. Uh, I think possibly for fear that too many people will try something and it will fall over. Um, so it, it, it may very well be be, be possible. Um, and I guess that's sort of the hope that, you know, um, we're talking about extending the life of old machines and you know and, and keeping things going and giving people a decent alternative to microsoft um you know and but you know chrome is also for the big boys you know you look at any of their enterprise stuff you know it, it, it's serious gear so if you put this software onto a decent bit of hardware and then get it to run the subsystem like you want it to you you've got some power there so you know um fingers crossed Brilliant. Okay. Um, yeah. Are there any final questions before we kind of finish up for the evening? Apologies for jumping the gun a little bit. No. I've got the million dollar question. Aha. Shoot. Chris. Um, we've um, we've re refurbished a lot of computers to give to school kids, and for the low end ones, we've been putting Neverware on them. Would you suggest that we now switch to use the developmental um, Chromos Flex? instead i mean i would say at the moment no uh i would say because if you want for example if, if your school wants to run a certain app that they get out the play store they can't do it so i think that that, that hobbles what if you've got i guess if you've got an environment where it's all web-based you know so basically they they just need a chrome browser then yeah 
I guess give it give it a whirl, give it a try. I don't think you've got anything to lose. If you start to want to put a, a specific third party app on, you've got a problem. But but stuff on a browser, which I guess a lot of kids, a lot of schools now, it, it is all browser based. You, I think of the stuff that my kids do, it's mainly browser based. I don't think you'll have too much of a problem. Um, and I say it's quick and it's rapid. Um, so, yeah, I'd say g give it a whirl. I can't speak for the longevity of the product, you know, and it, we all know ourselves through various Google products that we've loved over the years that they have absolutely brought the hammer down on it at a, at a second's notice. Uh, but I, you know, they're obviously throwing some some resource behind this and i i feel it, it i feel it's not going to disappear anytime soon he said <laughs> okay. headlines on next pc pro fluid flex dead <laughs> um so yeah i i I'd, I'd give it a try L let me know if you do though please i'd, lo mm -hmm. I'd love to i'd love to uh, know an experience of it in the real world thank you thank you so much lee and james uh, unfortunately i have to leave the, the meeting and um, it's all been very interesting i'm looking forward to trying it out myself thank you so much no Take problem care, thank you great okay and thank you everyone for coming along this evening um, and again a massive thanks to lee for you know giving up your evening and many hours before the evening trying to get all the tech to work <laughs> i thank you for your patience everyone i'm, I'm so sorry that um I, you know that actually went far better than I thought it was going to. I thought I, thought I was going to have to draw your pictures, uh, but uh, yeah, thank you for bearing with me. We'll cut that out in the edit. You'll never know it happened. It's great. I can test my video editing skills. It's perfect. <laughs> um, in the meantime, if you do have any further questions for Lee or just want to continue the discussion, feel free to do so in the um, the talk topic um, for, the, for this evening's chat. Uh, link in the chat. Um, and we can continue the conversation there if anything else comes up or if you give it a go yourself, feel free to report back and how it went. Mm. Uh, I'd be curious to hear how you get on. Um, I should also mention that currently um, for Restart, uh, we're in the middle of, um, uh, we're currently uh, doing a fundraising campaign at the moment as part of the Big Give. So um, any donations made to us this week will be doubled by the Big Give, which is very generous of them. So we're trying to make the best of it. Um, so if you feel so inclined, if you're able to feel free to have a look at our campaign page, again, link in the chat, no pressure. Um, but thank you again, everyone for coming uh, and have a great rest of the evening or Greg, in your case, have a great day, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> enjoy uh, and see you all very soon. Thank you Thanks guys. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks. 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 Thanks.